ChatGPT's new GPT builder, combined with Zapier's AI actions, is opening up the doors to some pretty wild workflows and use cases. And in today's video, we're going to learn how to use GPT actions alongside Zapier's AI actions, so let's get right into it. Our use case today is a product marketing manager at a tech company that would like to keep their team up to date on their competitors' latest developments. Though today's topic could really apply to any industry and role. Let's build a GPT that summarizes major news stories and product launches related to our competitors from the last week. Our GPT will have three main requirements. First, that each summary be a maximum of 75 words for brevity. Second, we'll be providing a targeted list of competitors to our GPT as extra knowledge. And finally, the GPT will then need to send an email newsletter of the summary to the team using the GPT Actions feature in conjunction with Zapier's AI Actions. So let's start building. Our opening prompt will be to make a highly capable product marketer for XYZ Corp. They will be responsible for sending out a weekly newsletter that summarizes any major news and product announcements from our key competitors. Each summary should not exceed 75 words. Attached is our list of key competitors you can reference. And this is the list I'll be uploading, pretty much just a list of 10 major AI companies. Once it's done processing our initial prompt, the GPT builder would then generate a profile picture for the GPT. Very strange logo, but I'm going to run with it. If you'd like a more in-depth tutorial on the GPT builder itself and how you can change the logo here or at any point in time, feel free to watch the GPT build tutorial linked below. Next, let's set the tone of our GPT. XYZ Corp is a fun place to work, so let's have the tone be conversational and engaging. And as you can see here, it's now going to have a conversational tone while still maintaining its professionalism since this is a corporation after all. This is a great follow-up question as I would like the newsletter to highlight new product announcements and AI-related themes. In terms of workplace topics to avoid, let's pick politics as we're more focused on product developments. So we'll let the builder know that it should highlight new product announcements and AI-related themes while avoiding topics related to politics. Okay, perfect. Next, we need to decide whether the GPT should seek clarity when it's not sure or make an educated guess. Since this is a newsletter going to an entire team, let's err on the side of caution and get it to ask for clarifying questions. Lastly, how should our GPT introduce itself? Let's call it our product buddy. Awesome, so the basics of our GPT are now set up. Before we take it for a spin in the GPT playground, let's pop over to the configure page and tweak those conversation starters. Interestingly, it hadn't named the GPT as the name is still blank. This is still in beta, so I'm not sure if this is a bug or expected behavior. Either way, let's name our GPT product buddy. Next, let's review the instructions the GPT builder assembled from our prompts to ensure they encompass everything we envisioned for our GPT. As our product buddy at XYZ Corp, your role involves crafting engaging, conversational, yet professional weekly newsletters. You focus on summarizing competitive news about new product launches and AI-related themes, ensuring conciseness within 75 words and avoiding politics. When clarity is needed, you politely ask for more details. As our product buddy, you make complex market information accessible, sticking to factual reporting without bias. You're prepared to offer insights and answer questions, especially regarding AI and new products, presenting yourself as a friendly and knowledgeable team member. This is an awesome instruction set. One thing that's missing though, is an explicit reference to our competitor knowledge spreadsheet. While the GPT could in theory infer this, for reliability, I'm going to tell it to do so. That can either be done directly on the instructions page or in the builder. Let's do it in the builder and see how that goes. So we'll ask it to make sure it only references competitors listed in the knowledge files attached. Okay, back to the instructions on the configure page, we see that it added in it must exclusively reference competitors listed in the attached knowledge files. Perfect. And now let's customize our conversation starters to better fit the use case of our GPT, generating a newsletter we can send by email. And let's simplify things to just two opening prompts. First one being brief on our competitors' biggest news this week. And second, any new competitor product launches this week. 
and we'll go ahead and delete the two other conversation starters. Now, this is very important. Before testing our GPT, be sure that code interpreter is enabled. This gives our GPT the ability to actually read and analyze the file we uploaded. Web browsing is also key since we wanted to pull the latest news this week. Okay, let's see if this works. Let's try the first prompt. Well, something apparently went wrong, but giving it a retry, it looks like it delivered the goods. And indeed, only source news from competitors on our list. Okay, so now that our GPT is delivering on its mission, let's give it the ability to send this summary out as an email to the team. If you're following along and haven't already, click save or update in the top right corner, then confirm. It may take you out of the builder when you save, but that's okay. You can always come back in from the explore page or the top left corner of your GPT. Now for connecting to Zapier, head over to this link, which has the instructions for connecting your GPT with Zapier. I've also linked it down below. The page does seem daunting at first and some steps aren't that clear, but I do aim to make this entire process a little easier for you. Full disclaimer, there will be hiccups along the way. First, copy the URL in the get started section. This is basically how your GPT will know which service it needs to talk to, Zapier. In your configure page, scroll down and click add actions. Then click import from URL. It's very hard to see that it's a button, so hopefully OpenAI works on that design element. Paste the link you copied from Zapier, then click import. Thankfully, you don't have to memorize all the text it just posted. The next steps will be to add new instructions for your GPT to understand what it is you're looking to do with Zapier's AI actions. So hit the back button, and if you scroll down, you can now see your Zapier actions listed. Now, let's give our GPT the ability to send emails. Pro tip, ensure your Gmail account is already connected in Zapier to have a more streamlined process. On the Zapier AI Actions page, copy the instructions template and paste it in your GPT's instructions. This may seem like a lot, but really, it's just how your GPT will know how to communicate with Zapier to perform your desired actions. The most important part here is the required actions. Since we just have one action needed, which is to send an email, let's go ahead and remove the second action it copied. The long link you see there is how you'll tell your GPT what you'd like your Zap to do. Currently, there are two configuration parameters you can use. The setup action, which will provide the action you want to be done, and the setup params, which can then include specific details that we will not be covering today. For now, we'll keep it very simple and just set up the send action. So let's change our setup action to Gmail send email. Some examples shared by OpenAI and Zapier seem to indicate you can have spaces between the words. But just to be safe, I'm adding percent %20 to represent spaces. Let me know if you have any luck including spaces in the URLs. Hit close. Now, we need to update our GPT to prompt sending the summary as an email as well. Back on the create page, let's prompt it. Once you've provided the summary, can you send it as an email? And let's see what happens. First, it needs to sign into Zapier. Initially, clicking sign in didn't work for me. And it turns out you need a valid privacy policy if your GPT is public or shared with a link. So to fix this, you'll either need a privacy policy attached to your action or simply change the public status to only me. And now the sign in button works and takes us to the Zapier connector. Click allow. It says no plugins installed, but will persevere. Since it kicked me out of the builder to sign in, let's try our prompt again. And finally, it worked. Now, I could have edited out these hiccups, and there's more, but this is all new and figured a lot of you would run into the same challenges, so hopefully you'll now be able to resolve them much faster than I. And yes, GPT Builder, let's test it out. I'm going to click Always Allow, which will hopefully reduce the amount of prompts it sends me. And look at that, one more step. So let's click Add a new action, then Gmail, send email. So now we're configuring how we'd like our email to send and appear. For simplicity, I'm going to have AI guess everything except the recipient field, as the email should always be sent to our specified XYZ corporate distribution list. 
So let's set a specific email. Then for the subject and body, we'll let AI do its magic. Finally, let's enable our action. Okay, so let's head back to the builder and let it know we've enabled the action. And of course, it ran into more hiccups, but it thankfully resolved them in the background. So with that, let's get the test email sent. And got the email and it looks great. Okay, so let's save our GPT and test it out once again by asking it for a brief. The summary looks great, but no email sent or prompted. So let's review our instructions. Looks like it didn't add our prior instruction to send an email following the summary as I figure it got lost during the authentication steps with Zapier. So let's add that in. Update the GPT for good measure and try again. It certainly took its sweet time, but I'll save you the wait and fast forward to the completed output. And this actually seems to be a much better and sourced email than its first attempts. For sending, let's tell it to use the default options we specified when we set up our actions in Zapier. So it'll send the defined XYZ email while leaving the rest to AI. It is odd how it keeps asking for permission, and I do wonder if it's something I did or missed on my end. Let me know if you run into the same challenges. However, it successfully sent the email. It could definitely use some spiced up formatting, but we've successfully built and run our very own product by DGPT. Now, there's definitely far more efficient ways to accomplish what we have done today. But given how these features are hot off the presses, I hope you still find value in me showing all the stumbling blocks I faced setting this up and how they can easily be overcome with some persistence and maybe a bit of luck. Let me know what you plan on building in the comments below. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.